Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and it's been a moment. So, what do I have for you in this video? I want to show you how to calculate the average of the top n. I would say maybe top n scores. That seems like a very easy thing to solve, but top n maybe by user or top n by another criteria. But let me explain the data set, and it will become very clear to you. So, um, just think of a test that users are allowed to write multiple times. Okay, so um, you can see that they are duplicating the names because some people have taken the test, you know, five, six times, and these are their scores. And what if I wanted to get the average of their maybe top five attempts or their top five scores, their top four, their top three, in such a way that when I change, you know, this cell, for example, you know, it gives me, you know, the corresponding average. So how do I go about that? I'm going to walk you through my thought process and a few pitfalls to avoid in the next worksheet okay so let's get into it so first of all i could put you know my n here maybe for now i I'll go with three right so then i just put n here um i could say name and here yeah i think i could have just done a copy from the other sheet right <laughs> okay so the first thing i want to do is to get a list of unique names because as you can tell they are duplicates here so i'm just going to use the unique function and say unique and then you know name right Okay, and that's a unique list of names that appear, you know, in the larger data set. You want to sort it, you could include the sort function, but I'm not going to do that for now. So the next thing is now to get the average of the top n. But for us to get the average of the top n, we must be able to get the top n, first of all. So top n could be top three, top four, top five, whatever you have in cell, what, h1. Okay, so when you think of the top numbers, most times you think of a function like, okay, large may come in. You can then look at the numbers that are greater than large of three or greater than equal to that. You know, but the interesting thing is where you have ties, okay? Because if you have a tie, you know, then what's large going to do? How many numbers is he actually going to give you? Three or four, you know, depending on if two numbers tie for, you know, third position. So, because I want to avoid some of, you know, the challenges I may have going that route, I'll probably just use the filter function. And I'll show you that construct quickly. Okay? So, I go with the filter function. And I want to filter on the scores. Right, so I'm filtering on the scores. And what's my criteria? My criteria is wherever the name is equal to Jane, so that it can just give me the scores that belong to what Jane. So I go to name and then I select the name column and say equals to Jane. Right, so I press enter. Okay, and these are Jane's scores. As you can see, the first one, right, 80, and the next one is 49. That's what you have here. Okay, but if you want to get the top end, it's very easy when the data is already sorted. If data is sorted, then you could just, you know, shave it up at some point and get what you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this, but because I'm interested in top and not bottom, I will sort it descending, meaning from highest to lowest. So I'm going to put a sort function around this. I say sort, okay, right, and then I'm just going to put um, descending, minus one, right? Now the same data set, now you see that it's sorted. So I have 94, 93, 80, and you know so on okay good now that i have you know the data sorted the index function can come in handy to extract you know the top n this is an array and if you put index here and say index index takes of course an array as the first argument and then if you say a row number if you say number one it's going to give you the first item in there that's correct if you say two it's going to give you the second item but now you need one two three when your n is three so what's the easiest way to create that sequence of numbers? I've already given you the answer. The sequence function. Okay? So what you do is you put a sequence function here so that the array doesn't just give you the index. Rather, doesn't just give you, you know, one, two, or three. It gives you for the three of them. So you say sequence of this cell. Okay? Right? So which will give you, in this case, one, two, three. So the index will return the first item, the second, and the third item. Okay? And then you close the bracket. Now, you can see that we've been able to shave that data off to just give us three. And if I change this to four, for example, you know, it gives us four. Okay, good. Now, at this point, you feel that you are fine. I would love to create the problem first and then show you how to fix it, but I will just quickly go ahead and do that. So if, if I put my N as 10 now here, now see what happens, right? Because Jane has not taken the test up to 10 times, the rest of them return reference errors. And if you try to do a sum or an average, you would come up with an error. So bearing this in mind, what you need to do is to put an if error. You can put an if error here. So just say if error and then put a zero. Okay. Now you have for all the tests you actually took, you know, 
um, you have the scores. We're assuming here that, you know, <laughs> you won't get to zero, right? So, and then you have zeros there. Okay. So that helps to cater for that problem. So now that you have this, um, you pretty much have the scores you want. You want to get the average. Okay. So I would naturally just say, oh, use the average function. But when you also have those zeros at the end, they will also filter, um, they will also feature rather in your average calculation, which you really don't want, right? Because if you say a top 10 and the person has only taken the test six times, well, then you should be using, you know, six for the calculation. So rather than doing an average, <laughs> I would pretend to be very smart and use a sum divided by a count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sum because I know the sum is not going to be affected by the zeros. I'm going to divide it by whatever number I have here. That technically is an average, right? Because I sum and then divide by the count. So if I need three, sum just three, divide by three. Okay. And we have this. Take this down. Okay. Maybe we just do something with the formatting there. Number and one. That should be good. Right. So now if I change this to four, this will give me the average of their top four scores, the average of their top two essentially one that's the highest score so this is how i think you can get it done trust me there's always more than one way to skin a cat and there's definitely more than one way to solve this problem but this is an interesting construct that i like and i thought to share so if you ever need to do an average of a top n or a sum of the top n you know this is really the thought process you filter to get the items you sort them in descending order from highest to lowest you invoke the index function the index can then help you extract, you know, the elements you want. One, two, three, top one, top two, top three, you know, and you define, put an if error just to cater for cases where n is greater than the number of items you have there. And then the rest is just to use the sum divided by count, which will give you an average. And that is it. Okay. I hope you like this video. Please do hit the like button. And thank you to all of you who have subscribed already trending above 1,000 subscribers. So that's really good. So you, those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel Excel. For now, I'm out.